In a surprising revelation, Larry Kudlow, the former director of the National Economic Council under President Donald Trump, has made a heartfelt confession about the love of his life. Known for his economic expertise and political commentary, Kudlow recently took a moment to share a deeply personal aspect of his life. In this video, we'll explore the details of Kudlow's confession and the identity of the special woman who's captured his heart. Early Years and Rise to Prominence Lawrence Allen Kudlow, born August 20, 1947 in Inglewood, New Jersey, embarked on a path that would lead him to become one of the most influential economists and media personalities of his time. Raised in a middle-class Jewish family, Kudlow attended the Dwight Englewood School before enrolling at the University of Rochester, where he graduated with a degree in history in 1969. His early career began at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, where he worked as a junior economist. His passion for economics and keen insight into financial markets quickly propelled him to Wall Street. In 1979, at age 32, he became the chief economist for Payne Weber, a prestigious investment bank. His tenure there was marked by his accurate predictions of the economic trends of the late 70s and early 80s. In 1981, Kudlow joined the Reagan administration as the Associate Director for Economics and Planning in the Office of Management and Budget. He played a significant role in shaping the economic policies of the Reagan era, including the Economic Recovery Tax Act of 1981, which slashed marginal tax rates and accelerated depreciation for businesses. After leaving the White House in 1983, he returned to Wall Street as Chief Economist and Senior Managing Director at Bear Stearns. He quickly became a sought-after commentator on economic issues, regularly appearing on television and writing op-eds for major publication. Personal Struggles and Addiction Despite his professional success, Larry faced big personal challenges. For years, he struggled with alcoholism and cocaine addiction, which began to take a toll on his career and personal life in the early 1990s. In 94, his addiction reached a breaking point. He resigned from his position at Bear Stearns, and his then-wife, Judith, filed for divorce. Court documents revealed the extent of Kudlow's substance abuse issues, with Judith stating he had been on a, quote, steady cocaine binge and was, quote, desperate for money. She expressed concern that Kudlow would probably overdose or die of a heart attack if he continued to have access to funds. Recognizing the severity of his situation, Kudlow sought treatment at the renowned Hazelden Rehabilitation Center in Minnesota. He spent five months there working to overcome his addiction and rebuild his life. In a 2013 speech at the Silver Hill Hospital Gala, Kudlow spoke candidly about his experience, saying, quote, I never believed I could be clean and sober. It's been 18 years plus. I was at Hazleton for five months. They helped me a lot. He attended Alcoholics Anonymous meetings regularly and relied on the support of loved ones, particularly his wife, Judith. Rebuilding a career As he worked to maintain his sobriety, he gradually rebuilt his career in the mid-90s. He became the economics editor at National Review magazine, where he wrote extensively on economic policy and political issues. His unique perspective and ability to explain complex economic concepts in accessible terms made him a popular commentator on television news shows. His conservative economic views and unwavering support for free market principles caught the attention of Republican politicians. In 1997, he served as an economic advisor to New York Senator Al D'Amato's re-election campaign. Though D'Amato lost, Kudlow's influence within conservative circles grew. In the early 2000s, his media presence expanded significantly. He became a regular contributor to CNBC, hosting his own show, Kudlow & Company, which aired from 2002 to 2005. His expertise and media savvy made him an attractive advisor to Republican presidential candidates. In 2016, he served as an informal advisor to Trump's presidential campaign. And following Trump's victory, Kudlow was considered a top contender for the position of chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors, though that role ultimately went to Kevin Hassett. The NEC and a Heart Attack in March 2018, Trump appointed Kudlow as the director of the National Economic Council, succeeding Gary Cohn. 
The position placed Kudlow at the center of the administration's economic policymaking, where he played a key role in shaping tax policy, trade negotiations, and regulatory reform. His tenure as NEC director was marked by his strong advocacy for the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, which significantly reduced corporate and individual income tax rates. He also supported the administration's efforts to renegotiate trade agreements, particularly with China, arguing that such moves would benefit American workers and businesses. But just three months into his role, he faced a significant health scare. On June 11, 2018, President Trump announced via Twitter that Kudlow had suffered a heart attack and had been taken to Walter Reed Medical Center for treatment. Fortunately, Kudlow's heart attack was described as very mild and was expected to make a full recovery. Controversial Moments and Media Scrutiny As a prominent figure in the Trump administration, Kudlow faced increased media scrutiny and found himself at the center of several controversial moments. One occurred in June 2018, shortly after the G7 summit in Canada, when Kudlow harshly criticized Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Following Trudeau's announcement of retaliatory tariffs against the U.S., Kudlow accused the Prime Minister of betrayal and, quote, stabbing us in the back. Kudlow's comments drew criticism from some quarters, with critics arguing that such inflammatory language was unproductive and damaging to international relations. Love and Redemption In a rare moment of vulnerability, Larry Kudlow made a surprising confession during a live television interview in 2020. Overcome with emotion, he declared that his wife, Judith, was the love of his life and that he was deeply grateful for her unwavering support throughout his personal and professional struggles. Kudlow's heartfelt admission offered a glimpse into the personal life of a man who had long been defined by his public persona. It was a reminder that behind the polished veneer of a successful economist and media personality lay a complex individual with deep emotional ties and a history of personal challenges. Judith Kudlow, a painter and Montana native, had been a constant presence in Larry's life since their marriage in 1986. She has stood by him through his battles with addiction, his professional triumphs and setbacks, and his high-pressure role in the Trump administration. Kudlow's confession of love for his wife was a testament to the power of redemption and the importance of personal relationships in weathering life's storms. It was a reminder that even the most successful and influential people are not immune to the universal human needs for love, support, and understanding. Legacy and Lasting Impact Kudlow's career spans more than four decades. His influence can be seen in the economic policies of multiple Republican administrations, from his early days in the Reagan White House to his role as a key advisor to President Trump. His ability to translate complex economic concepts into accessible language has made him a sought-after commentator and an influential voice in conservative circles. His willingness to engage with the media and his skill at crafting compelling narratives have helped him shape public opinion on a wide range of economic issues. As he continues to navigate the ever-changing landscape of economics, politics, and media, his impact on these fields is certain to endure. Now it's time to hear from you. What are your thoughts about Larry Kudlow? Let us know in the comments section below.